What's up my sad stars, Michael Printrick here. In this, this video, we are gonna tackle question number six from the AP Statistics 2025 free response exam. All right, let's dive right into it. This was an investigative task problem that dealt with several different things, including some brand new thing that you were never taught. But if you know how to do some basic math, hopefully you figured it out. All right, so basically we have Stefan, a psychologist, and he wants to look at the difference between reading scores of children who read in the morning versus children who read in the afternoon. So he basically, he has a bunch of kids sign up and 50 of them are going to be assigned to read a story at 9 a.m. and then answer some questions. And then another 50 are gonna read a story at 3 p.m. and answer some questions. And he wants to see, you know, is there gonna be a difference between those different scores based on reading in the morning or in the afternoon? So here is the results of his data, both sample sizes were 50. There's the mean reading score, which is the number of questions they got right, and then the standard deviation, and the same with 3 p.m. Now, if you look at the data, it does seem that reading in the afternoon produced slightly higher, but you never know if that actually means anything. So that's exactly what this question is going to focus on. All right, so the first question says that, you know, Stefan's going to do a test of significance here, and he's going to do a two-sample t-test because he's working with means, and he clearly has two different samples. Mu AM is the AM average, mu PM is the PM average for children that are similar to those in the study. The null is that there's no difference. The mean in the morning is the same as the mean in the afternoon. And the alternative is that what Stefan's trying to show is that maybe there is a difference. So the P value in part A is given to us as 0 0.002. So how cool they do all the work for us. We don't have to actually run the test, we give them the P value. All they want us to do is state a conclusion at the 5% level. So here's my answer to that. Since the p-value of 0 0.002 is less than 0 0.05, Stefan should reject the null hypothesis. There is statistically significant evidence that the mean reading score for all children, similar to those in the study who would read the story at 9 a.m., is different than the mean reading score for all children, similar to those in the study who would read the story at 3 p.m. Now, I want you to note that you need to know with a low p-value, you reject an all. And when you reject an all, that means there is evidence to support the alternative. And I want you to make sure you have all this context. I literally copied this sentence from the problem. And that just made my life a lot easier. And that way, I didn't have to say, did I word something? Did I miss something? Because even making sure you add in there about children who are similar to those in the study, because at the end of the day, they use 100 volunteers. So I can't say this is going to be true for all children. So little tiny details like that could really matter to you getting a good grade on this problem. All right, part B says, explain why it was appropriate for him to use a two-sample t-test for the difference in two population means instead of a paired t-test. Well, to understand this, you need to know what a pair t-test is. So here's what my answer was. I wrote a two sample t-test is the appropriate test here because there were two separate samples or groups. One group of 50 kids read in the morning at 9 a.m. and another group read in the afternoon at 3 p.m. A matched pair t-test is required for paired data. In this case, um, if all the children read at both times. So all the kids read at 3 p.m. and all the kids read at 9 a.m. Then maybe you could do a matched pair t-test, but that would not even, first off, that's not what happened here, nor would that even make sense because they would possibly do better the second time since it was the second time they read the story. So would it make sense to have the kids read it twice? Now you could also pair two kids together that were very similar, maybe the same age, same gender, um, same IQ, same basic reading level, and then one reading in the morning, one reading in the afternoon. That might actually be a great idea here, but that's not what happened here. There was no reason that our data was paired together. We had two completely different samples, and that situation, you know, in that situation that he that happened here, that's what's re going to require a two sample t test because we have the mean from one sample versus the mean of the other sample. We're looking at the mean. Um, of those values and we're trying to determine, you know, if there is a difference in those population means as opposed to pair data when we're looking at the mean differences of all the pairs. Nothing was paired here, so that's why what he did was completely appropriate. All right, now we move into a whole brand new thing and I'm not gonna read all this to you. Basically, there's this idea that you might have statistic significance in your data like we had here, right? We claimed that there was a difference. But sometimes in the real world, it's not a meaningful difference. And they even use an example and say, hey, you know, you might have a difference of heights of 3.8. And that would obviously be way more meaningful than if a difference was 0.2. Now, they might both be significant, but the 3.8 has more real world application, more real world practical importance. So to determine if your difference actually has practical importance, there's this thing called Cohen's D coefficient. Now, I don't even know if this is real or not. 
but basically it's a coefficient that allows us to determine if there is, well, a practical importance. Now they give you the formula and it's really not that hard of a formula. Basically you subtract the means in the numerator and take the absolute value of it. Then you divide by this pooled standard deviation. They even give you the formula to find that pooled standard deviation. Now the first part of this question simply says calculate Cohen's D coefficient. It's really that easy. So all I did was I actually went through the data and I did it. The difference of our means was 2.7 and the, well, it's negative or positive, but it's the absolute value. So it's positive 2.7. And then I calculated this standard deviation of the polled standard deviation. So again, just make sure you're using the right values here. So 4.12 squared plus 4.43 squared divided by two. Again, following the formula, just use my calculator. I got that polled standard deviation to be 4.2. 2778 went ahead and divided my uh, absolute value of the difference of the means there and I got a Cohen's D coefficient of 0.6312 again all I was doing was don't even know what this thing is but I was just following the formula to get this 0.6312 not too bad now for the second part of this they tell us that higher values of Cohen's D indicate greater practical importance and lower values indicate less practical importance so typically we use the intervals listed in this table to kind of give us some guidelines. So any value, any D value between 0 and 0.2 is not very meaningful. 0.2 to 0.8, somewhat meaningful, and greater than 0.8 is very meaningful. So based on the value that we just calculated in part one, what do we think? Well, um, 0.63 falls in this interval right here. So basically the Cohen's value for Stefan's data is 0.63, which means the difference we saw in reading scores is somewhat meaningful in real life. So yes, we saw a difference of 2.7. Yes, we concluded that it was a significant difference, but it uh, really might not be that meaningful that we should go ahead and tell everybody read in the afternoon and don't read in the morning. So even though our data concluded that, again, based on this chart here, pretty simple chart, it's somewhat meaningful in real life, but not very meaningful. So that's all we want to make sure is that we understand where our D value fell. All right, now part D, the final part basically says this. Suppose that the standard deviations that we were given our table, S1 and S2, were both greater than 4.43. If you remember, one of them was 4.12 and one was 4.43. So let's just say they were both greater than 4.3. Everything else is the exact same. Would Cohen's D coefficient in this new situation be smaller than, larger than, or the same as what we calculated in part C? So I went ahead and actually created this. So I went ahead and came up with some new standard deviations. I just totally made these up. I didn't get these from anywhere. I used 5.1 and 5.2 as long as they were greater than 4.43. That gave me a pulled standard deviation of 5.1502. And when I divided my difference of 2.7 by that, I got a lower. So this would be a lower value. So Cohen's D would be lower. So that was the question, right? Would it be smaller than, larger than, or the same? It's going to be smaller than. Now, I also noted that this kind of actually makes sense because if your data has more variation to it, which a larger standard deviation would tell you, then that would tell you that the practical importance would not be as strong because if your data is varying a whole lot, then it's not really trustworthy data. And then it would make sense that the practical importance would not be as strong. So again, pretty simple question there. All you had to do is, Again, do what I did just to make sure you understand that, yes, I am going to get a smaller Cohen's D coefficient, and then we can make a pretty easy answer there. Now, part two says, does the Cohen's D coefficient described in part D indicate that Stefan's observed difference in the means in the new situation would be more practical, less practical, or the same? Well, again, another really easy question. Go back to this table. If we have a lower Cohen's D value, then it's not going to be very meaningful in real life. So it's going to be less meaningful. Now, at the end of the day, our, our, you know, we got 0.63 under my new calculations. I got like 0.5 something. So we still fall in that middle region. But at the end of the day, it does say that lower Cohen's D values indicate less practical importance. 
So here's what I said. I said, based on the chart with a lower Cohen D value, our data would have an even lower practical ports. Now, it might not fall into very low. It might still be like somewhat meaningful. But at the end of the day, it's going to be lower because the Cohen's D value is lower. So the chart clearly shows that Cohen D values closer to zero have shown less practical importance. So the observed difference in reading scores is not very meaningful in real life. So that's what we can conclude here based on everything that we've seen is that even though our conclusion to the test was that there is a difference, and you might even say, hey, it might be better than reading the afternoon, you're gonna have a higher test score, but it's just not that big of a practical difference. Based on our data, we showed that, or even if we have a higher standard deviation, it's only going to get worse, meaning less practically important. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, the official scoring guidelines for the 2025 scores were not out when I made this video, so I can't promise this is all the exact right answers to the perfect letter of the dot. But um, based on what I'm reading and based on the you know, what I'm trying to determine here, I think it all makes sense and hopefully it's not too bad. All right, see you later. Hope everybody had a great 2025 AP Stat season.